this is Indian Country Today. Esquili, yes, eh. Thank you for joining us. I'm Patty Tolohungba. The president is back on the campaign trail despite the pandemic and amid the nationwide Black Lives Matter protests. On Saturday in Tulsa, Oklahoma, he hosted his first rally since early March. There are 39 tribal nations in Oklahoma, but the president didn't address them directly or hold a roundtable discussion with tribal leaders there. Outside of the rally, indigenous activists and medical workers used red, red duct tape to make crosses on their vests. They served as volunteer medical support for the Black Lives Matter protesters. Tomorrow, the president will host a rally in Arizona, which has 22 tribes and where positive COVID cases have been on the rise. The Phoenix mayor says the countywide mask policy will not be enforced at the rally. Native Americans have been disproportionately impacted by COVID-19, with the Navajo Nation in Northern Arizona being one of the hardest hit. While in Arizona, the White House confirms the president will make a stop at the international border to check on the progress of the wall being built there, which passes through Tohono Autumn land. His last visit to Arizona was on May 5th when he toured a plant making N95 masks. He also met with two tribal leaders that day and he signed a proclamation on missing and murdered indigenous women. TSA, the Transportation Security Administration, is taking steps towards training agents to recognize and accept tribal identification cards. The agency wrote a letter requesting tribes submit images of official government issued IDs. The letter says the TSA is committed to protecting the nation's transportation systems while ensuring the freedom of movement of people. Having sample IDs will insist in, in, in ensuring smooth travel for enrolled members who use their tribal ID cards. As calls for removing symbols of colonialism and oppression grow, one California ski resort is considering changing its name. According to the Sacramento Bee newspaper, Squaw Valley Ski Resort is creating a plan to review the use of the term. That term is an ethnic and sexual slur historically used by settlers describing Native American women and has been a part of the legacy of violence against Native women. The resort is inviting tribal leaders in the region to weigh in on the discussions. Christine Horvath, a representative for the resort, said the social and political climate prompted them to take a look at the use of the term. She said it's also used by several area businesses and state and federal agencies. Horvath said these groups should be involved in the discussions as well. She said previous efforts to reconsider the use of the term weren't successful, but this time may be different. She said, quote, changing the name of one of the most prominent resorts in the country would represent a seismic shift in attitudes about the Lake Tahoe Resort just as protests over the killing of George Floyd have sparked a nationwide conversation about racist symbols and Confederate names. Now for the latest numbers of COVID positive cases in Indian country, let's go to Jordan Begay, our Washington editor. Jordan? We have COVID-19 updates from five tribes across Indian country over the weekend, including the death of a tribal police officer. Here are the latest numbers from our database. There are 10,867 positive cases and 441 deaths in the Indian health system. Again, that is a total of 10,867 positive cases and 441 deaths as of June 22nd. The Cherokee Nation in Oklahoma saw an increase of nine cases the tribe now has a total of 155 cases, and Oklahoma is one of the many states where COVID-19 cases are rising across the country. And on Sunday, Oklahoma had a new daily record of novel coronavirus cases. In Mississippi, the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians reported 21 new cases and three more deaths. That brings their total to 865 cases for the tribe and 61 deaths in total. The Colorado River Indian tribes in Arizona announced nine new cases in the last 24 hours, and giving the tribe a total of nine, 191 cases. And tribal uh, officials are now requiring tribal citizens to uh, wear face masks in public settings, including in businesses on the reservation. And the White Mountain Apache tribe in Arizona has 99 new cases, and the Navajo Nation had 158 new cases and 11 additional deaths. The White Mountain Apache tribe is really getting hit hard by the, this virus. Jordan Benabigay, thank you.
he ahead. And we'll be right back. This is Indian Country Today. Welcome back. Every 10 years, the federal government requires a census count of every person living in the United States. Counting so many people is a daunting task, and especially this year, the coronavirus pandemic is making it tough to count American Indians and Alaska Natives. Joining us today to talk about the concerns of not having an accurate account in Indian Country is Jessica Imitachi. She is the Los Angeles Region Partnership Coordinator for the U.S. Census. Welcome, Jessica. Good morning. Thank you. You have seven states in your region with many tribes represented. Let's start with Alaska, where the whole census count started in the little village of, um, uh, uh, what was the name? <laughs> Blank on me. Tuxuk Bay, yes. Yeah. Tuxuk Bay, Alaska. Um, how well is the census count going in Alaska right now? Well, we have, as you mentioned, had some challenges due to uh, the coronavirus to COVID-19. So that did put a hold on a lot of our operations. Um, and that was particularly difficult in Alaska, where you already have um, remote villages. We have one operation that we call Remote Alaska, and where we actually up, we do an operation called Update Enumerate. And we're enumerating people in person on the spot. Um, well, because of coronavirus, many villages closed, and they also limited travel to those villages. Um, and therefore, it didn't allow us to move forward with that operation. A large part of Alaska is also what we call update um, leave, where we update an address physically as we're on location before that housing unit, and we leave a census packet. Both of these are different than the standard operation, which is called self-response, meaning that we mail your packet of information directly to your home address. So because Alaska is unique in that it has both large um, remote Alaska operations and large update leave uh, enumeration, it has been somewhat slow and difficult in Alaska. Now that uh, the state has phased its reopening, we are moving forward with update leave there. Um, we obviously have continued to have self-response and we're working our way through each one of the villages to complete the update and enumerate for remote Alaska. It's, um, it's, again, it's a hard task anytime you do the census count, but when you're in this global pandemic, it just increases the issues tenfold, I think. Um, and, and certainly we're seeing that because the returns are so low and we'll get to that in a, in a minute here. Um, in the other region, uh, or the other states in your region, which uh, include Washington and Oregon, California, Idaho, Nevada, and even Hawaii, uh, what is the count like in those states? Like, can you give us an idea of, of the best results so far in, the, in your region and then some of the lowest results so far? So I think our highest, uh, our state with the highest self-response specifically has been Washington. And I didn't go and check the, I should have checked the numbers this morning, but we do have a self-response mapping tool um, on our 2020census.gov website. And so those are updated daily. And each state and each tribe can check their response rates daily using that tool. Um, but, you know, over the last you know, few weeks, Washington has been um, number one in our region in terms of self-response. Um, there are many things that have influenced this and one of them is the phased reopening of states. So, and um, how many areas within a state are under an update leave operation. So that has been one thing in certain states that have large update leave, it's kind of thrown those self-response numbers off of it. And we can talk a little bit more about, you know, the technical components of that. So we are working through that. And um, now we have all of our ACOs, our area census offices opened in each one of our states. And so we are in full operations now moving forward. All right. And um, so 
you know, we hear a lot that the census is so important and we'll get to that, you know, why that is, but you mentioned the, the map on the census website. People can check to see what their tri tribal response rate is. How do they find that map? So if you go to 2020census.gov, um, it will bring you to the website. There is a search tool in there and you can put self response mapper and click search and it will bring you bring up the mapping tool. Um, in the mapping tool, you can look by a specific tribe, tribal reservation area. You can look by a county or a city and then you can of course look by a state. It will give you our overall national self response rate, which I think is around 61, 62% right now. Um, and then, you know, you can compare what your state looks like to that national average or what your city or county or tribal reservation area looks like as compared to that national average. All right. And, you know, I looked at that map and started looking at different states and tribes. And here are some of the numbers as of Friday. Wisconsin, uh, in the tribes there, I looked at a couple of the tribes. The Menominees in Wisconsin have a 10.4% return rate. So pretty good, um, but would you say at this point in time of the census count, is that lagging behind where the count was this time, you know, 10 years ago? So that's one thing that the tool does. Also, you can, you can compare that to the 2010 rate. And so that gives you a little bit of perspective of where you were in 2010 and where you should hopefully be in 2020. Um, and we do have a lot of variety across our region in terms of where tribes measure up. Um, some of our tribes, for example, um, I think Fort Gamble has almost a 70% response rate right now. So they're looking great. Um, and then others, you know, ha they haven't started or they haven't received their package yet because update leave hasn't started in their area. So obviously their numbers are very low because they haven't had a chance to, to self-respond yet because they haven't received the materials. So that's part of what's influencing this. Um, again, that's due to the fact that states have, have, have had a phased reopening. And with that, tribes have also had a phased reopening. Not every tribe has reopened at the same time. We do still have some tribes that are closed in our states. And so the reservations are still closed to all outsiders. Um, and then some tribes that have remained closed have still allowed for the census operation to move forward. So, you know, you may see some tribes that are technically closed that do have increasing self-response rates because they have allowed us to go ahead and move forward with the census operation because they see the value in that. And that's been really important. That's been a great partnership. Well, it, it's again, you know, how, how are tribes responding to everything right now? You know, the pandemic and then the census and, and civil unrest. I mean, there's just, there's a lot on, on the plate of tribal uh, leadership. And, um, but this is something that individuals can, can take care of. Uh, I wanna run off some other numbers in Wisconsin because again, it shows you how different even in one state, the response rate is. So as I mentioned, Menominees have a 10.4% return rate. Lac de Flambeau has 16.3%. La Couta Ray has 24.2% and Bad River has 34.2% return rate. So even with one state, you have a range of returns. So I'm wondering what makes a difference in, in some tribes in the same state that have such different uh, numbers when it comes to response rate. In uh, Minnesota, Red Lake has 4% return rate, yet uh, Fond du Lac has a 59.9% return rate. What do you think is impacting that? Again, you know, same state, one, one tribe has 4% response and another tribe has nearly 60%. So a lot of that is due to how we enumerate them. So if it's a tribe that is a self-response categorized enumeration, meaning that they, re they have largely physical mailing addresses on their reservation, people receive their mail at home, then they were a part of our initial self-response rollout. So folks got their packet right away, they were able to self-respond as soon as they got their packet and their census ID. However, if they were a tribe that were in the update leave category, many of those haven't gotten their information yet. So they haven't had a chance to be able to get their packet get their census ID and go online and self-respond. And so that delay causes, you know, a delay in, in those self-response numbers. And that's where you see the variance. And tell us again about the unpaid uh, category. What, what, are, what, what is that? 
the unpaid category. I mean, I, the, the category you just mentioned, it wasn't unpaid, it was something on, on a... So we have, for, for, tri for most tribes in the lower 48, not including Alaska, because Alaska has remote Alaska operations, but for the other tribes, tribes typically fall under two categories. Self-response, again, which that means we, you have a physical address, you receive your mail at home, and we're mailing a packet of information to your home address. That has your census ID, it has all the information about the census. It, you know, you can also receive a paper questionnaire in one of the mailings. It has the census call-in number. And so you can immediately respond as soon as you get that packet. The large majority of tribal reservations across the nation typically fall under what we call update leave. That was an operation that was put on hold due to the COVID pandemic. Um, and that was to protect the safety of, you know, the tribal reservation, tribal members. As states shut down, we were also concerned about, you know, the safety of even our staff, sending our staff out, you know, so health and safety has been first and foremost um, as a part of, you know, this new environment that we're in and trying to complete the census. We're very conscious of that. And so with update leave, there is an enumerator or a census taker that actually comes onto the reservation, physically leaves a packet of information at your door and updates your housing address on the spot in our mapping system. That is typically reserved for those reservations who are largely PO box based, um, typically in very rural areas where they're not able to receive their mail directly at their home. All right. Okay. Update leave. That update leave. So we update your address and we leave the packet. All right. And and so that makes sense because I looked at my tribe, Hopi, and we have a 1.1% 1. Uh, 1 return rate. And yet I know that on my reservation, people have those PL boxes. They don't have a physical address. So that that is a little bit more, um, uh, I guess, reassuring that that even though it's only a 1% return rate right now, there's still going to be a process to make sure that they're counted. Now, um, so, you know, we're a lot of us, as we mentioned, you know, the states are in lockdown, the tribes are in lockdown. And so it would seem like people have a lot of time on their hands to, you know, be home and why not fill out the census form? And um, so how can they do that? We've talked a lot about, you know, returning the, the form itself, but what are the other ways people can uh, fill out the census? So that's a great question. There are three ways to complete the census. So you can go online. That's probably the most popular and the easiest way, um, given the fact if you have good broadband or if you're able to, you know, go to an area with good cell signal. Um, that is the easiest way. I completed my census form online. It took me less than five minutes. Um, the other way, which is, I think, very common for those areas where there may not be good broadband or good Wi-Fi, and that is using our census call centers. So we provide you with a 1-800 number. You can call. Initially, during COVID, we did hear some reports back where the wait time for that um, was somewhat lengthy, or you would leave your information and a person would recall you back to complete that form. We've now been able to reduce that to where typically we have less than a 30 second wait time in those call centers to be able to complete your census form um, by phone. And then of course, the third way is the traditional way, the paper form. Um, ultimately, everyone will receive a paper form in their mailings. There, you know, We do do several mailings and reminder mailings. So if you're in that self response category, you will end up getting a paper form in a mailing. Um, otherwise, in the update leave category, we already provide that paper form as a part of the update leave packet. All right. And in preparation for doing interviews about the census, um, I, I called in. I, I called in and to see how that process was. And um, it, was, it was very easy. Uh, I didn't have a long wait. And um, somebody came on the line and the gentleman helped me out, asked all the questions. And it was no problem. It, it was I had maybe 30 minutes, I think, on the phone. So it wasn't, it wasn't uh, hard to get on there. And we'll give out the number. That's uh, the number to call in is 844-330-2020. Um, and um, again, you know, we'll put that up and people can uh, call in. Uh, would you recommend that people just use the phone and call in? So what we are recommending, um, again, if you're in a self-response category, you have your census ID, you can respond however is easiest for you. And you're right. You know, 
folks are um, at home now or have been at home. And so what better time to use that as an opportunity to go ahead and complete your census form. However, for those folks that are in the update leave category, we have asked them to wait until they do receive that packet because that census ID number is very important. It helps us match that person and that housing unit to a physical address, to a physical location, I should say. And so um, again, it's important to think about the fact that the census is two things. It's, an, it's a population um, update count and it's a housing count. And so we wanna be able to capture both of those things accurately. We, the census, the mission of the census is, is to count everyone once, only once and in the right place. And so that in the right place part is really important too. All right. And um, what is your best advice if the household has more than one tribe uh, represented in, the, in that household? So you can definitely list that. Um, each person, as you're, count, as you're capturing each individual in the home, you can list their respective tribe. Each individual can list up to six tribes for themselves. So for example, um, I affiliate with one tribe, Chickasaw Nation. My sister is, a, you know, three tribes. She's enrolled in one tribe, but she is of three tribes. If we lived in the same household, I could capture my tribe, Chickasaw Nation. She could capture her three tribes, Chickasaw, Seminole, and Creek. And, um, you know, it doesn't preclude you from being able to, to get all of that information. And how do those numbers then go to each individual tribe? Because again, these numbers uh, indicate or dictate federal funding for grants and, and other programs. So do those, if you're from three different tribes, will funding go to all three tribes? So it's important to think about, you know, I, I guess when people answer that question, they're looking at it in a number of different ways. And this is a self-response survey. So it's up to that person. I like to, you know, advise folks to think about where do you receive your services? You know, um, typically that is where you're enrolled. And so, you know, that, that would be your uh, primary tribe, I guess you could say. Um, but we do do data tabulations. So it will say, you know, um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and use her tribes as an example. So it may say Chickasaw alone or Chickasaw in combination with another tribe and then we would tabulate those who are of different tribes. She's an old Seminole. So it would, you know, for her it could say Seminole alone or Seminole in combination with other tribes. And so again, we're able to tabulate those data across six different data tables. And then the the question asking who is house head of household, let's say that it's an interracial marriage and the head of household household is non-native. Um, how does that figure in if the rest of the household is enrolled in a tribe or even, you know, just identifying as being a tribal person? That's a great question. And that's been um, a somewhat confusing question. So I'm glad we have a chance to talk about that. But so we do capture um, the home itself. So while you can individually capture each person's race, ethnicity, tribe, um, in order to capture the home as a quote unquote American Indian home, it is important that the person who is listed as head of household is the native person, is the American Indian person. Um, one other component to that, which we, you know, really started to realize as we were going online using this online data tool, is that the person, it, it will ask you a question, do you rent or own your home? You know, are you the person that pays the mortgage and or the lease? So if you say no to that and you list the non-native person, it defaults that person back to person number one. So that's a little nuance that we weren't initially aware of as we were starting to look at rolling out our online self-response tool. So these are things that we're learning kind of as we move through the process. So okay. if you wanna make sure that that home is captured as a Native American home, um, the person who pays the rent would also have to correlate with the person who's head of household, and that would have to be the native person. Okay, and very quickly, how are you counting people who are who are in, in detained in jail, in prison? 
So that's a part of our group quarters operation. We are now, that's a, that's a very timely question. We're starting to move into group quarters right now. And so we do have our census staff reaching out to contact tribes, whether you have an assisted living facility, a substance abuse treatment center, um, a nurse, a skilled nursing facility, a, a federal tribal detention center, um, any of those things are considered group quarters. You may have a boarding school, you may have an Indian college that has dorm boarding. Um, okay. All of those are part of that. And so we're now gonna be reaching out to you. Okay, very good. Well, Jessica Imodici, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. All right, and uh, so yes, it's the time to fill out your census form and get that information in. Thank you so much for watching. Uma Uma Katsi Ukalyani. Take care of yourselves. Your life is precious. I'm Patty Thalongba. Join us again tomorrow. is Indian country today.